So in this video, let's discuss Stellar and XLM as it's been making a lot of noise during this bull cycle. And it's definitely really important to understand this project as it is the 16th largest project by market cap currently. So the story starts back in 2014 when Jed McCaleb, who I just made an entire video detailing his entire crypto journey, definitely watch that video. I'll link it in the description. So Jed McCaleb and Joyce Kim, who's a former lawyer, entrepreneur, very knowledgeable in technology and finance, and is also a woman, which is really refreshing to see because co-founders and the very top of crypto projects, not a lot of women are involved. So I would actually appreciated seeing that, that Jed McCaleb and Joyce Kim him co-founded Stellar in 2014 and they also co-founded a non-profit organization called the Stellar Development Foundation. The purpose of this nonprofit is to be dedicated to the development, to the oversight and watch over the growth of the Stellar ecosystem. So the ultimate goal here is for the Stellar system to remain open source and for financial inclusion. Financial inclusion is the mantra across the board for Stellar. Now, a lot of people know that Jed McCaleb left Ripple and the XRP project to start Stellar. There is a common misconception that the Stellar project is actually just a fork from Ripple and XRP, but that's not really the case. If you take a look at Stellar and Lumens XLM, you will see that the foundational code actually has differences in it, and some of the goals are different as well. Now, it does have a lot of similarities. For instance, the ultimate purpose is to facilitate cross-border payments and other asset transfers and to make money as easy to send as it is when you're sending an email to someone. The Stellar Network initially actually collaborated with Stripe, where their CEO, Patrick Collison, actually gave them $3 million in seed funding. And before we go any further, I want to clear up because I've mentioned Stellar, Lumens, XRP. So Stellar is just the network. It's the platform itself. Lumens is the native crypto of the Stellar network. So an analogy would be Stellar is like Ripple and Lumens is like XRP. However, Lumens actually has a ticker symbol, which is XLM. And if you look at it as far as a char of how much Stellar is trading for or Lumens, you will always see it as XLM. And that's akin to Bitcoin having the abbreviation or the ticker symbol BTC or Ethereum ETH. And the whole purpose of these Lumens or XLM is to ensure liquidity and the smooth operation of the Stellar ecosystem. So what problems are Stellar and XLM actually trying to solve? What's the utility? What's What's the use case for it? The first is cross-border payment settlement. They want to be cheaper than SWIFT. The other one is token issuance. They want to issue stable coins and other types of tokens and coins on the Stellar network. The other one is micropayments. So they want financial inclusion. They've been working a lot in emerging markets. And what they want is when you send even small payments, because it's so cheap, you're going to be using the Stellar network. The other one and a very popular one is remittances. And this is money sent by individuals working abroad in other countries. Think of migrant workers that come to a country, try to do well, and then send money back home. This is a common issue because the fees are outrageous. And aside from fees, there is sometimes a lot of corruption at play back home. Whereas if you can do it through crypto with one of these networks, then perhaps you can go ahead and avoid those hurdles. Now, they do have some key partnerships. Two of the largest that comes to mind is IBM and also Circle and its USDC offering. And I'll actually probably dedicate a whole video on what exactly IBM, uh, Circle, and some of these other companies that are partnered with Stellar are actually doing and how are they using it? And is it just a pilot program 
or is it really a huge use case for it that I think is gonna scale in the future? So with that being said, let's take a deep dive into this project. As someone who's a huge proponent of crypto, I wanna pay attention to all of the projects. I'm personally not someone that just because I champion certain projects already or because I'm an investor in something, I want all other projects to fail. I don't think that's what the future looks like. Think of payment processors like Square, PayPal, Stripe. I mean, there's a lot of room for a lot of different brands to be successful, and it's truly decentralized or diversified in that sense. I don't want just one company controlling everything. I don't think that's healthy, and it's also not super secure. So in this video, we're not just gonna talk about the nitty gritty of the consensus protocols, the tokenomics. I'm also gonna take a look at the prices. We're gonna discuss market cap, what it means for the future. And if you enjoy this video when it's over, please mention in the comment section which aspect of Stellar, XLM, or another crypto project that's in this similar type of space and trying to solve this type of problem you would like for me to cover next. So without further ado, let's take a deep dive in. So one thing I really admire about Stellar is they have an absolutely phenomenal website that is very in-depth, it's very easy to navigate, and you can learn so much about all of their offerings and all of the details of the actual network, the consensus mechanism, the tokenomics of it all, the real use cases. It's very easy for developers as well. So if you take a look and hover over the About Stellar section, you will see that they do have an intro to Stellar, they have a ton of videos and stuff, but the learning resources is something that's been really, really helpful for me to figure out exactly what is going on and how all of this works. So if you're not familiar with the concept of anchors in Stellar, they're basically trusted organizations that connect the blockchain to the traditional financial system. So they issue digital tokens on Stellar that represent real world assets like fiat currencies or even commodities. When I say fiat currencies, we're obviously talking about like the US dollar, euro, the peso. These tokens are backed one-to-one -one by the real assets held by the anchor. So this provides a reliable way for users to deposit and withdraw value. Anchors act as bridges, making it easy to move money between the Stellar network and the traditional banking systems. They also handle really important tasks like KYC, which is know your customer. Now, I know that some of the crypto purists frown upon KYC. They want it to be fully decentralized, anonymous, all this stuff. But when you're trying to do what Stellar is trying to do, you have to have some sort of KYC in place if you actually want legit companies, banks to be using it because they're all looking for that type of compliance. So anchors also ensure liquidity for their tokens. They enable really fast, low cost cross-border payments by providing a secure way to exchange different currencies or assets. So by linking Stellar to the global financial system, anchors play a vital role in helping Stellar achieve its mission of creating a more inclusive and connected financial world. And what I really like here and what I wish more of these crypto projects would talk about is the motivation of getting involved. So here you can see that they detail what actually motivates an entity to become an anchor. And this is what I mean by this website is set up really nicely. Even reading through all this information, like I like how visually it's laid out so it doesn't get extremely boring and dry. So if we go back to the learning resources, something that's really, really important is the Stellar Consent consensus protocol. Let's actually take a peek at this because I do want to discuss this a little bit. So Stellar uses a unique protocol called the Stellar Consensus Protocol to ensure that all participants agree on the state of the network. So to understand it really easily, basically the Stellar Consensus Protocol uses a system called Quorum Slices and each participant, a node, in the network selects a small group of trusted nodes to agree with and then they form a web of basically overlapping trust relationships and when enough nodes in this web agree, the network reaches consensus. Something important to point out about the Stellar Consensus Protocol is that it doesn't require a central authority. So anyone can join and participate in the network. It's fast and efficient, and it can continue operating rather smoothly even if some nodes 
fail or act maliciously as long as the majority of honest nodes remain. So to explain this consensus very simply, basically nodes exchange information about transactions and the status of those transactions. And then each node checks with each other its trusted quorum slice and updates its agreement based on the consensus of the group. Now, once enough agreement is reached across overlapping quorum slices, the network finalizes the transaction. Now, the last topic I wanna cover here is I actually wanna go back to learning resources and talk to you about lumens. So this is XLM. This is what everyone talks about when they look at coin market cap or the chart is trading. It's actually the underlying cryptocurrency XLM. And so let's talk about some of the tokens economics. So the initial supply of XLM was 100 billion when it was created and launched in 2014. So there was a burning event in 2019. Stellar burned 50 billion XLM to improve efficiency and community trust. So now there's a fixed total supply of 50 billion XLM. And as far as the circulating supply goes, if we take a look at Stellar right here, you can see that the current circulating supply is actually 30.21 billion. Now, the Stellar Development Foundation holds a significant portion of XLM for network development, ecosystem support, and partnerships. So that's why this number of circulating supply is a lot less than the total supply. So let's now actually talk about the use cases of XLM. So it is used to pay small fees on the network. So currently that's 0.00001 XLM, and that is the minimum per transaction fee. Now, this is not going to create the type of burn that you're hoping for. The whole purpose of this is to prevent spamming of the network. You also have to realize that each Stellar account must hold a small amount of XLM, and that is one XLM currently. That's the minimum balance to remain active. Again, because there's 50 billion XLM, this is not going to create a tremendous amount of pressure on supply and demand that's going to cause the price to skyrocket. It's also used used as a bridge currency. So XLM facilitates seamless currency exchanges when direct trading pairs are unavailable. So like if for whatever reason, the US dollar to the peso, you couldn't uh, change it very easily, then you could change the US dollar to XLM and then to pesos or vice versa. You then change the pesos to XLM to the US dollar. And it's used because it's fast, it's low cost for international payments and remittances, and it's really useful for financial inclusion. You could see that Stellar actually does a lot in emerging markets. So what's really interesting and a lot of people don't know is that initially it was actually inflationary. So the supply of lumens was actually supposed to inflate by 1% every single year. But what happened is that it was removed in 2019 because of a vote by basically validators in the system, and now the supply is fixed. So as it states right here, there's only 50 billion lumens now in total in existence, and no more lumens will be created. So that this video doesn't run way too long, I'm going to save the use cases for Stellar, which again is cross-border payments, asset tokenization, they're trying to do on and off ramping, and they are doing a lot to attract people to build DeFi applications on their network. That being said, though, I want to jump in and speak about the actual price and situation of XLM. So if you take a look at coin market cap, which is my absolute favorite place to go to see the state of market caps and just what the price action has been doing for different cryptos, you'll see that right now it is organized by how big the market cap is. And we can see that XRP has actually fallen behind Tether at the moment. But if we scroll down, you can see that Stellar XLM is currently the number 16 largest crypto by market cap in the world. And the total market cap currently sits at over $12 billion. Now, if we take a look at it as far as volume goes, you can see that XLM is still up there. It is the number 18 cryptocurrency by volume. And what volume shows you is it actually converts 
back into USD and it measures how much of a cryptocurrency was traded in the last 24 hours. So you can see that there's a lot of activity when it comes to the trading of XLM. Now I'm gonna show you something really interesting here. So if you take a look at the one year chart of XLM, I mean, people are absolutely crushing it. As a matter of fact, if you were an investor in XLM on November 3rd, it was sitting at around 90 cents and you could have well over 5X your money in just a couple of weeks. So it's pretty wild how quickly crypto goes up. And if we go a little further back in time, you could see that in 2018, it saw a big jump. We saw a big jump again around middle of May of 2021. Remember, these points right here is not the absolute maximum price it was. It's actually higher than that. And the reason that it's not showing you exactly how how high it is is because some of these are rounded off just because of the type of chart this is this is not a candlestick chart obviously it's a line chart so as you can see we're experiencing quite a boom right now here's something really important that i want to point out if you go ahead and you compare the chart of lumens to let's say the chart of xrp you can actually doing it you can actually do it using google finance i actually really appreciate these types of capabilities that they have. But if we type in XRP here, we select XRP, you can actually see that now it changes to percentages. Obviously, it's pointless for them to show prices. The actual price is different, and so this chart would look wonky. But here, we can actually compare it as far as percentage gain and loss. So if we take a look in a year's time, you can see that it's kind of similar. But if you take a look at, let's say, the five-year chart, you can see that it's very, very similar. As a matter of fact, Lumens actually saw more of a percentage percentage gain than XRP, especially in 2021. People hypothesize that things might change because XRP was so suffocated by all of the actions of the SEC and the lawsuits and such. But I do wanna point out that if you go to the one year, if you go to the six month, if you go to the one month chart, they do follow each other really closely. Look at the five day chart. And this is something interesting. I'm gonna make a separate video actually discussing if XRP is a competitor to XLM, if XLM can complement XRP and how they work together and should we actually be rooting for both of these projects. Regardless, if you're an XLM holder or an XRP holder.